fiery horse with the speed of light, a clod of dust, and a hearty Ohio silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Hail oh, Silver. It was late afternoon, and the cafe was crowded when the young cowboy walked in. He was a stranger, and as the bartender served him, he asked the usual questions. Well, you're just passing through, or you aim to stay a while in the valley? Depends. You know of anybody who needs a top hand? Uh, well, not right off. But there's some hombres just uh, bought the hanging rock spread, though. He'll be needing some men. What's his name? Well, I can't say as I've heard it. I'm not sure he's taken over yet. You might have to wait around for a little. Time's something I got plenty of. I could camp outside of town. It broke? It's medium. A hanging rock. That's a funny brand. Spreads at the end of the valley right under the cliff. There's a big rock up at the top. It'll make it easy to find. Sure. Say, I was noticing as I rode into town... From the looks of its office building, your protective association must be mighty prosperous. Everybody in the valley belongs. Big hombre standing out in front. Black mustache, black eyes. He the head man? Yeah. Name of McCamma. Well, that's pretty close. It, it's Macklin. Well, whatever he's calling himself, I used to know him. Hey, if you're handy with your guns, uh, he might give you a job. I'm handy, but no thanks. I don't like the way some protective associations are run. Better keep your likes and your dislikes to yourself, Bob. Somebody talking in my direction, Barkeep? Uh, that's Slim Allen. He works for the association. Well, as I was saying to you, there's some protective associations that work an ornery deal. If a ranch you don't want to belong, the association riders just put on some masks and rustle his cattle to prove he needs protection. You better get out of this valley. Fast. You figure on making me, Mr. Slim Allen? <laughs> I guess he don't. You better be careful, son. I will be. But I'm sticking around, too, till I see what the hanging rock has to offer. Adios. <laughs> Dusk was falling as Slim Allen and Mel Sutter rode out of town. Mel was the chief deputy of the association. He was big and tough. His eyes were cold, 
and a reddish stubble covered his outthrust chin. The two men topped a rise. Easy, boy. Easy there. Easy. And saw a campfire near a small woods. Get up there. The young cowboy was bending over it. Swiftly, they raced toward him. They pulled their mounts to a stop and dismounted. Oh, 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 steady. When the cowboy rose and turned to meet them, he found that he was staring into the muzzle of Mel's gun. What's the idea? You're moving on, mister. You're getting out of the valley tonight. Get his gun, Slim. Right. Let's go. Right. Uh, why, Mel's uh, powerful right cracked into the young cowboy's jaw and he staggered back. He ducked a left from Slim and lashed off with his own. Then he moved a step so his back would be against a tree. Both Mel and Slim moved in. The cowboy fought well, and for a moment he held his own. But the odds were too great, and he was forced to the defensive. Slim concentrated his attack on the body and made him lower his guard. Mel's fists were finding their mark again and again. The cowboy's left eye, his nose, an ugly cut opened at the side of his mouth. The younger man was weakening. It was impossible to stand such punishment for long. There's another, mister. To send you on your way. Oh, if you don't get out of here tonight, you'll be tasting hot lead tomorrow. Oh. Uh, hey, Mel, a couple of riders coming this way. Uh, uh, All right, we'll get out of here. He's done for. Oh. Oh. Get up, drop! Oh. Uh, mangy coyotes. Oh. I can't, I can't even move. Let alone get up. Oh, 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 he's terribly full of mash. An Indian. He's badly beaten up, Toto. Well, we have stuff in saddlebags for cuts. Oh. Take care. Just lie back and take it easy. That's all I can do. Who were those men? What was the fight about? Men? You're wrong. Coyotes. Who were they? Valley Protective Association. It seems I'm not wanted here. Oh. Oh. Tough hombres. Two against one. When a real outlaw comes along, they hightail it. They couldn't have seen my mask. As it happens, I'm not an outlaw. But that doesn't matter. Don't matter to me, that's for sure. Maybe this stings some. It fix up hurt plenty fast. Here, the doctor Indian go to it. Why does the association want you to leave the valley? Because I hurt their feelings. I said some outfits like theirs rustled cows from the ranchers who wouldn't join up. Oh, oh. Easy, far easy. Oh. I guess they thought it was their own private idea. You had no real reason for saying what you did? Just one. I've met up with their boss before. Macklin has no criminal record. He only calls himself Macklin. Used to be McCammer. Mike McCammer and his wife Jane, two of a kind. Crooked gambling and shady deals a specialty. And now he's on the side of the law. <laughs> that makes me laugh. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, it only sting a little while. It's all right. But Macklin can't make me leave the valley now. If I can get a job with a hanging rock outfit, I'm staying on. And I just hope whoever owns it doesn't join the association. The man who bought it doesn't intend to. Good. And there'll be a fight and I'll be in it. Hey, masked man. You know the boss of the hanging rock? Yes, I do. He arrived this afternoon. Did he bring a crew with him? Is there any chance for me? I think so. There are a couple of men who have been taking care of the cattle, but you'll need more. What's his name? Tom Donaldson. Oh, I'm going to... Who did you say? Oh, his name is Tom Donaldson. How long have you known Tom Donaldson? Oh, about three years. Oh, that ties in, doesn't it? Ties in with what? Do you know him? I'm not sure, but I've got to find out. Thanks, Indian... I'm all right now. Ah, better you lie still. No. I've got to ride out to the hanging rock tonight. The job will be there in the morning. Job? There won't be any job for me with that outfit. Not if I... Ah. Well, if you gents don't mind, I'm going to saddle my cayuse and meander on my way. It took the cowboy half an hour to reach the hanging rock spread. His jaw set, he climbed the steps, crossed the porch, and knocked on the door. Howdy. Oh, how it is. What's that? I guess the light must be bad if you don't recognize me. It sure is. Come on inside. You'll be sorry for that invitation. Now then. Uh, who are you? 
What do you want, young fella? Oh, no. You can't get away with that. You know me and you know what I want. I used to swear that if I ever laid hands on you, I'd choke you within an inch of your life. Me? You! But Pa was a kind man. He didn't like me to talk that way or feel that way. He couldn't even harbor a grudge against the brother who robbed and made him lose his ranch and end his days a bankrupt. I, I stole from my brother? It's only been three years. You couldn't have forgotten so soon. But, my boy, let me explain. Explain? What's it explain? You sold the trail herd and you disappeared with the money. You thought you'd never be found. But every crook gets caught up with sooner or later. And your time is right now. No, don't. Put your gun back, son. I could turn you over to the sheriff. But Pa wouldn't like me to do that to his brother. Just hand over the money and I'll be on my way. Thirty thousand. I I don't have thirty thousand. You're either going to pay up or I'm going to... You're coming. Drop your gun and raise your hands. Is that the masked man behind me? Yes. Yes, the masked man and the Indian. I should have figured they'd follow me. What's it all about, Tom? Evidently, he's my nephew. Evidently. The name is Bill, in case you've forgotten that, too. He says I stole $30,000 from my brother three years ago. He says I sold a trail herd and disappeared with the money. You know you're not a thief, Tom. Uh, how can I be sure of anything? Well, it's perfectly clear to me now. Bill, you can lower your hands. Sit down. I'm going straight to the sheriff. You and... sit down and listen. That's better. Now, three years ago, Tonto and I found your uncle lying by the side of the trail near Eagle Pass. He'd been wounded twice some time before, once in the head and once in the chest. The wounds had closed, but they had become infected, and he had a high fever when we found him. He nearly died. Are you trying to tell me that he'd been shot and robbed? I believe that's what happened. Then why didn't he come home after he got well? He didn't know where his home was. When I woke up in the masked man's camp, I couldn't remember anything in my past. People, places, where I came from, what had happened to me, nothing. You knew your name. That was stamped on his saddlebag. But I wasn't sure that the saddle belonged to me. What? You couldn't remember anything? No, Bill. And your memory hasn't come back at all since? No, no. You're my first link with the past. I believe what you've told me. I, I want to believe it. You understand that, don't you? Now try to pay back the money that was stolen. There's a mortgage on this ranch, but I'll sign my interest over to you. That'll take care of part of it. You don't owe me anything, Uncle Tom. Oh, yes, I do. You've given me back my, my identity. You've called me Uncle Tom. You've made me a real person again. If there's anything I can do, Bill... How about giving me a job? A job? You'd stay here? If you'll have me. Oh, I sure will. From now on, boy, this is your home. All right. Sounds good to me. Bill, how far was your old home from Eagle Pass? About a hundred miles to the east in Warm Valley. Tom could have traveled a hundred miles after he was shot. He might have been held up very close to Warm Valley. Yeah? Yeah. Did uh, many people know that he was coming back with $30,000? I, I guess so. And when he didn't come back, was there anyone who suddenly seemed to have a lot of money? Three years is a long time. There was McCammer. He put over one of his deals about that time. McCammer? The man who's known here as Macklin? Same. Say, if you're thinking... Hey, Mustafi, what... somebody right away. There he goes over the rise. That gray horse belonged to Macklin. Could Macklin have been watching us just now through one of the windows? Ah, but may not see him. It's possible, Toto. From now on, you and I had better keep watch on him. All right, let's go. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue our story. Mike McCammer, the head of the Protective Association, and known in the valley as Macklin, spurred his horse back toward town. His mount was lathered and winded by the time he reined up in front of the big white house where he lived. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. <coughs> Jane! I'm right here, Mike. I've been waiting. Well? It's him. I'm back from the dead. I shot him twice that night three years ago. I saw him fall into the ravine. He called me by name, and I shot him. You never could shoot straight. I can't believe it, but I saw him through the window just now. And not only him, I saw Pete's boy with him, young Bill. Could he have been the cowboy Mel beat up tonight? Yeah, his face was all marked up. Well, what are you going to do about them? Well, if Tom sees me, he'll go to the sheriff, and I'll go to jail. Are you going to let that happen? No, I can't. I'd lose everything. All right, then listen to me. This is what you're going to do. I can't kill him in cold blood. Listen. Tomorrow morning, you'll tell Mel and the others that before you even ask Donaldson to join the association, you want a few of his cows run off. Yeah? Tomorrow night, you'll go with them. I don't like that part of it. You must. It's you that must shoot Tom Donaldson. And Bill. Tom must have told him. Mel will be glad to take that chore over. Just get rid of them. But if anything goes wrong, if we can't get then away... Then there's another way. What? <laughs> you leave the details to me. It's got to be fast. He only has to see it's me fast. and... fast. Haven't you ever thought it was a mistake to build that ranch house directly under Hanging Rock? Huh? Someday, Mike. <laughs> Some night. That rock is going to fall. The following night, the Lone Ranger urged the great horse Silver to his best speed. They raced across the moonlit rangeland to the west, their destination, the Hanging Rock. And when the ranch house was reached, oh, the last man was out of the saddle and running as Silver slid to a stop. Um. Yeah? Hurry. What's up? Oh, where's your saddle? Right there. Bring it, we're riding. Where? Out to the herd. Who's with the cattle? Bill. We'll pick up Toby and Dick at the bunkhouse on the way. All right, come on, Silver. Is there going to be trouble? Looks like it. Al and I followed Macklin out of town. He met some of his men in the woods by the creek. Oh, are they coming this way? They hadn't started when I left. I was watching them. They had to be prepared. Oh, which horse do you want to ride? The black. I have my lariat right here. I'll catch him for you. Steady. Anyway. Anyway. You said prepared. There's nothing much to do but wait, is there? Yes, Macklin has about a dozen men. Easy. Me, Toby, and Dick. Four of us. I don't know I'll be with you. Six. Two to one odds. We're going to even them. How? By driving the cattle into the box canyon where the spring is. Oh, And all the six of us will have to do is protect the opening of the canyon. There's plenty of cover. Ready? Yep. All right, Ready. I'll open the gate. Sounds like a good plan. Should work. Of course, there's a possibility Macklin and his men aren't coming out here at all, but They I... wouldn't be meeting outside of town if they weren't up to some mischief. Exactly. If this is it, we'll be ready for them. Easy, big fella. Won't fill the heat up there. Tom Donaldson's herd was driven into the box canyon during the next 20 minutes. The horses were left in the canyon as well. And the Lone Ranger, Tom, Bill, and the other two cowboys took up their positions at the opening. It was then they saw Tonto riding toward them. Uh, what do you figure he's got to tell us, masked man? That they're coming. Hey, Kimosabe! Hey! Koska, Papa, ho! You work plenty fast. Yes, we're ready, Tonto. Uh, them come through draw soon now. You better take Scout into the canyon. Ah, Tonto, do that. Come through. In less than five minutes, Macklin's men swept out of the wooded draw. They reined up when they could see no sign of cattle on the open range, and then they started forward again, more slowly. The Lone Ranger could see the man in the lead pointing to the opening of the canyon. That's Macklin. They're heading this way. Yes. Think they'll make a fight of it? They may. Just to convince me I need protection before they ask me to pay for it. I'll give them a warning. The Lone Ranger's shot brought the forward movement of Macklin's party to a halt. 
A moment later, the association men dismounted, took cover, and opened fire on the guardians of the canyon entrance. We got better cover than they have. They'll soon realize it. But Macklin's men showed no intention of giving up, and the gunfight continued for five, ten, fifteen minutes. Then... Otto, that man over to the right has been wounded. Ah. We won't let anyone get near him. Maybe we take him prisoner. Yes, they've all had about enough. Uh, they've had enough, all right. They're starting for their horses. Ah, them leave man on ground. Yep. There they go. We'll take care of the wounded man, Toto. You follow Macklin wherever he goes. Toto, do that. Get him up, scout. The Lone Ranger and the Hanging Rock crew watched Macklin and his men disappear into the draw. Then they mounted and rode to the side of the wounded man. It was Mel Sutter. <laughs> the hombre that beat me up. Yes, Macklin's lieutenant. Now, is he dead? Oh, no, just unconscious. Bill, you and Toby and Dick had better stay with the cattle. Sure. We'll take Sutter to the ranch house, Tom. Right. Tomorrow we'll turn him over to the sheriff. Then the law will have to give us some action. It'd be the end of the association if he ever came to trial. They'll have to make sure that he does. I can't understand it. Why they left him behind. They didn't have any choice. Tonto and the mask man wouldn't let any of the others get close to him. But Macklin will realize that with Mel Sutter a prisoner, he's in a dangerous position. We'll have to be on our guard from now until morning. Two hours later, in the living room of the ranch house, the Lone Ranger and Tom Donaldson watched Mel slowly open his eyes. Huh? Donaldson. That's right. So those coyotes left me to die. You mean Macklin and the others who work for the association? A masked man. You were wearing a mask tonight yourself. I, I got nothing to say. Listen. Three shots. Auto signal means trouble. Doesn't sound very close. From above. He might be at the top of the cliff. Let's see. There's a warning from Silver. You think maybe Macklin's up there? We'll see. Oh, what the... An explosion. Mask man, the hanging rock. Look, it's moving. Get clear of the house. I'm going back for Sutter. As the Lone Ranger ran back into the house, the great boulder at the top of the cliff started to fall. Tom watched it in terror as he ran. In a matter of seconds, it would be crashing down the steep slope, and the ranch house was directly below it. Tom reached a safe distance. The boulder was on its way now, gouging out tons of gravel as it fell. The roar of the landslide was deafening. Tom rested his eyes from the terrible sight and watched for the Lone Ranger to reappear in the doorway of the ranch house. He shouldn't have gone back. He'll never get back in time. But at that moment, he saw the tall figure of the Lone Ranger. He was carrying Mel. He glanced swiftly upward and then started to run toward Tom. A chance, just a chance. Another ten feet. The landslide roared down to the ground. A great column of dust sprang toward the sky. And then, miraculously, the Lone Ranger emerged from it to place Bell Sutter on the ground beside Tom. There. You, you saw that coming. I think you came back to get me. We wanted to make sure you got to jail safely. Who did it? Who blasted that rock? I suspect your boss... He must have known I was in there. He wanted to kill me so I wouldn't talk. No, no, Mel. It wasn't you that he was trying to kill. Me, you mean? Yes, Tom. He was trying to finish the job he started three years ago. Here comes Tonto. Now we won't have to guess about what happened. Work Come on, You all right? Yes, Tonto. Not plenty good. Tonto Fred. We got your signal in time. Me follow Macklin from town. Wife ride with him. Them go uphill. Trail to top a cliff. Stop by big rock. Me not close enough see what them do till last minute. And then me fire shots. Macklin and his wife set a charge of blasting powder up there? Ah, me plenty glad you safe. Where are they now, Toto? Them come down hill trail. We go after them? No. Oh. They'll come here to find out how well their plan succeeded. Have a better idea. Tom, this concerns you. I know you don't remember. <laughs> When Jane and Mike Macklin reached the bottom of the hill trail, they turned their horses toward the buried ranch house. Full of all the rotten luck. What's the matter, Mike? Either he wasn't inside the house or he got out in time. That's Tom Dunnison standing by the corral. Stop you. No, no. This is our last chance to finish him off. If you won't do it, I will. Over there! Friends! If he isn't going for his gun. He hasn't got a gun. Good. Oh, 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 oh. Steady. Who is it? Steady. Why, don't you remember us, Tom? Jane McCammer and Mike. Yeah. Been a long time. You were the ones who blasted that rock. Shut up. 
There's no harm in admitting it, Mike. Just keep him covered. Uh, shoot him. Not yet. I want to find out something first. Where's your nephew, Tom? Is he under that rubble? This is the second time you've tried to kill me. Well, we'll have better luck with the third. Now, where's your nephew? You may get me, but you'll never get him. He knows what happened three years ago. He knows you stole my money. You'll pay for what you've done. I'll shut you up first, and I'll get him. Go ahead and shoot straight this time. As Mike started to squeeze the trigger, a shot rang out from the pile of rubble that had once been a house. Mike clutched his arm, and his gun dropped to the ground. The Lone Ranger ran toward him. Quick, Tom, get his gun. I've got it. I've got a rifle here. No, you don't. You won't need this where you're going. It's true. They're the ones who tried to kill me three years ago. How did I heard what they said? But you can't prove anything. Don't say a word, Mike. There's Tom to testify against you. There's a wounded man lying over there in the shadows who determined to send you to jail for the rest of your lives. You made an enemy of your chief deputy, Mike. Well, you hang if I have my way about it. Keep them covered, Tom. I'll go and get Bill. Here, Silver. Bill can stay with Mel. We take these two into the sheriff. Sure thing. Easy, big fellow, easy. One, Silver. Yes, you two are headed for jail, all right. You thought you were mighty smart, Mike, but this time you tangled with an hombre who can outsmart any of your kind. Who is he? Who is that masked man? A lady. He's the Lone Ranger. I'll Silver. This is a product of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. <laughs> <laughs>